So we've got the Isuzu NPS 300. Now this is a dual cab and these have become popular overlanding vehicles. Problem with them is, being a commercial, there's no insulation in them. So we've come up with a pack, a pre-cut pack specific for this model. It's all cut out templated. You've just got to gut it and put the stuff in. So the first thing you're going to want to do is take the interior out. So your seats, your vinyl floor, all your trims. Now these come apart pretty easy. The clips are obvious. There's a couple of Christmas tree clips there. So a trim removal clip. Remover will help you pry those out. A couple of Torx screws up under these sun visors. It's all pretty much straightforward. Stage one, Deadner. Now that's a vibration dampening mat. So here we've got the bulkhead or the firewall of the motor and it's really tinny. The floor here, it's all very tinny. So the first thing we do is put the Deadner down, which is a peel and stick. That's gonna take that sound energy and get rid of that tinniness. So throughout the truck, you can see the whole roof we've done because that big roof skin, that'll move around the shock through the chassis, the rear firewall and the whole engine compartment, the front foot weld areas and the door skins. We find it's easier to do the roof and put the roof back together as opposed to stand all over the floor and damage all the product you put down. So the first thing you're gonna put up there is your sound deadener, your stage one. You'll cover that skin, so you're aiming to cover the exterior sheet metal, not that top hat section there, that's visual. It's not gonna make noise that you need to worry about. So everything that's not visual, skin that roof. And then we've got your van liner. Now you've got a bit of room up there. So the reason we've used van liner is we can fit twice the amount of material. There's a bit of jute padding on this particular truck stuck to the headliner sheets themselves. When you pull it out, you'll see them. You're gonna to need to remove those because they're not gonna fit back in if you do. Now they're disappointingly only a couple of strips across the back there. What we've got is strips that run longitudinally. So the first strips fit in the high spots of the roof. You'll put all those down and that'll make almost a level plane that your bigger strips that are already pre-cut the size, you'll stick them up. Now something to note with the roof. Now the roof is gonna reach mid 80s degrees Celsius in the peak of summer. So although it's self-adhesive, now self-adhesive is only extruded by the Micron. I like to add spray contact adhesive. So I'll lightly spray it on the back of the foam and also spray it to the sheets of sound deadener. And then put your van liner up and make sure you get a roller and roll that out so you've compressed the foam and you've got the glue to bite in, then it's gonna last there for the lifetime of the vehicle. Once you've got all that back in, it's all silver, it all looks pretty. You can put your headliner pieces back up, seal it up, that's done. The next bit we'll move on to is the rear firewall. So the next one is the rear firewall which comes with no insulation on it. The first thing you want to do is put your vibration dampening mats, which is your stage one sound deadener. Stick that to all the single skin sheet metal areas. There's a top hat section beam that runs across there. There's no need to do that. And it's going to be exposed in the end because we're not going to foam or carpet over it. The acoustic liner, which is your twin layer foam, we've got pre-cut to this shape. Now that one is a self-adhesive product, but given the amount of ribbon structure in there, I personally like to use a bit of spray contact adhesive on it. The reason is that we're gonna put carpet over the top. You're putting extra forces on it that in those deep valleys, that adhesive may not be enough to hold. You may be asking too much of it. So a bit of spray adhesive on the contact side and the stage one sound deadener face, and then stick that on. Now the trick with that is you wanna choose a corner to datum. So if I was to start up here, I'd tack the foam up here. I'd then let the foam bag out and I'd tack it over there. Now, you'll find over the, say, the vertical height of this, the foam's actually cut off a pattern to allow it to roll into those valleys, so it'd actually be too tall into that window area. So tack the two top corners, let it bag out in the middle, and then chase the perimeter of that window frame, and you'll have excess foam in there, and then slowly just massage that around, and you'll get that to conform and push into all those... <laughs>
now that you've got your foam on, you can get the carpet added. Now we found that it's easy to take this rear window out. Now these are pretty simple. They're an old school conventional setup where you can just get your fingers under here, basically start flicking the rubber and pushing the glass, work your way around and that will just pop out. It's good to have somebody on the other side to catch it. Last thing you want to do is break it. So you've taken out your window and you want to figure out how to put it back in. We'll show you the basic way. Grab yourself a bit of wire. Let's get started. So halve your bit of wire, choose the center, poke it in the channel. So you're gonna need a friend. Two of his makes it easy, so call a mate. Russell! I've just finished. So we're gonna use gravity here to our advantage, and we're gonna stick this lower edge over. This window works well because this is a wider spot, so we'll tuck one side in. Well, let's just tuck the center in. Each vehicle's different. Now, Russell. Yes, sir. I can hear you. Can hear you. Make sure your mate can hear you. Push down a little bit. Now we're just gonna chase this out. And this is tapered, so you wanna go easy here. Just give it a slight wiggle. Not too much pressure. Little circles works well. Press down here, thanks Russ. All right, we'll go over to the other side now, chase that in. Let's push the glass down a bit, Russ. Yep. Bit lower, Russell? Yeah. Give the glass a shunt down for us. All right, chase the top. Just put a bit of pressure down here. And we'll get this side now. And this will just fall in position. And That's it. Just chase around with your fingers. Bit of tap from the back. It's about as easy as it gets. Now, if you've already got some form of canopy there and you can't get access to it, you can still just tuck your foam into it. Or sorry, you can tuck your carpet into it just by levering this back. So with the carpet, it's pre-cut to size. Now it's oversized to fit into this glass channel and hide behind the rubber. And it's designed to run over all the valleys and bumps and lumps. So same philosophy as when you did the foam. What you're gonna do is Get your carpet outside of the truck, put it on the ground, put a bit of cardboard, the overspray you'll have trouble cleaning up. So a bit of protection down, spray the whole sheet and then come in and spray over the foam face. Now you can get in pretty neat without getting overspray on the exposed panels, but if you do, a bit of wax and grease remover, isopropylene, mineral terps on a rag and you can wipe all that stuff off. Start, same thing, tack a corner where you want a nice visual line tack an adjacent corner and then what I do is come in and tack it around this window frame. There's a top hat section down the bottom here where you can tack it on too and then just slowly massage that excess material and work it into the surfaces. The good thing about this carpet is it'll expand and contract in the sense that if you need a stretcher you can use the butt of the application roller, push it in, roll it into those areas. If you feel like you're going to get a crease you can stretch it out one way and slowly massage it so you don't get that pleat or that buckle in it.
This is cut to size, but carpet being flexible, you're going to find that it's going to bag out. So there's actually more material in here in its height to allow you to go up these contours. So what I've done is left it baggy through here, tacked down this line, and I've tacked down this line. Now, it's easier just to pull the glass out of this vehicle. If your glass, your window's in, you can still tuck under it. But what I've done is tap that up so it's basically level. And you see I've got a few creases here. You'll find if you just randomly stick these down, you're going to have creases, but you can pretty much just loosely massage this stuff, pull it a bit one way, and that crease, as you can see there, now I want to try and roll it into this valley. So this length, we're going to absorb this length, you can see as I go down. Now there's a good example where there's feels like there's excess material, but I just gently massage it or push against the foam adjacent or opposite it. You'll see I'll get the length out, and that disappears here too. You can see now I've got all this bag in this here, but you watch this as we push this out, chase it through, just gently chase it through. This will all disappear. You can see here there's a bit of excess, but I know that's concave in there, so it needs the amount of material. stage two, the mass noise liner, it's a drop in, it's template to size around all the seats, you drop that in, you don't need to glue it in. You've got access still through all your vinyl here for serviceability in these key areas. This rear firewall area is cut specifically to wrap over. A few guides here are going to be the holes that are cut out. If you basically start in the middle here, so spray adhesive once again, you're going to spray the foam side and you're going to spray the sheet metal side and you're going to stick this guy on, date him up with the holes and then you can wrap the edges. So rather than spray the whole lot, what I do is stick the middle or tack the middle, work out that this bit's going to run down and these two are going to join together neatly. You can spray one, stick it down and then do the other one. So you will notice that we have removed the factory jute or insulation that it's got. It's about 10 mil thick and we've replaced it with a product that's around 12 mil thick. If we keep that on there, all our clips, they're going to be bursting, struggle to fit. So we've removed this. Now, you're never going to get it all clean. You only need to get a bit of the thickness down. We do include what they call a gypsy clip, which for all these press studs here, they're basically a double adapter. So when you come to these rear firewall vertical bits, if you choose not to remove the insulation pad and you want to keep it doubled up, that gypsy clip will allow you a bit of offset that this press button is still going to mechanically work. So you can see here, we've still got access to all the serviceability stuff. This just clips back in. And then also this firewall area, we can still use the factory clips here. And you'll note down on this passenger side, there's an access hatch here. We've actually made the pattern. So this all still functions. So up front here, you've ran your Deadner all through the footwells on this area behind your calves and everywhere you sit. Now, being that it's got an internal bonnet or you sit directly on top of the motor, you're gonna pull up a little bit short around this engine area, just so you don't squeeze out any of that deadener and make a mess as heat and everything comes through. So if you leave a 70 mil border around that, you'll be right. You'll see our template is pre-cut to fit this. We glue this one on here. Now it's got clearance for where the seat clips in. So you line up those areas, glue it down. That'll help with packaging. You're gonna to have to remove the 
cotton jute under there too so the offset isn't too much that your clips on your seat actually work. The next pattern fits under the driver's seat. That area can just float, you don't have to glue it. Across this area under the gear shifter, now your truck might be different. What we've done is actually make that mass noise liner go under here as far as we can, trying to block out the noise. What it does though is you're gonna to have to trim this back. Now I've taken around 10 mil off this vertical height and around 15 I reckon off this. All you can do is trace that with a texter. I put it on a linisher, buzzed it back and then got a Stanley knife and just scraped back the plastic so it actually looks like factory. You can't even tell that it's done, but that'll determine that gap, make it look neat, make it look factory. All this center console area, what is of the center console still bolts back down. Everything fits as per the vinyl did from factory. So now we've got the interior sorted, we better go and sort out these wheels and ride height.